In this video, we're going to go through some more true or false questions. These first couple of questions involve fractions with things with exponents. And so you can see here we have 4x to the 6th, y to the negative 3. Does that equal 1 over 4x to the 6th, y to the positive 3? So what you might remember is that when we have a negative exponent, what that does is that can be written as 1 over and make the exponent positive. So if I have y to the negative 3, I can write that as 1 over y to the positive 3. Now, the problem is that that negative 3 does not apply to everything here. The negative 3 power is only on the y. 4x to the 6th does not have any negative exponents, so it would not move to the denominator of the fraction. And so this is false. Because 4x to the 6th, y to the negative 3, the 4x to the 6th would stay on top of the fraction, and the y to the 3 would move to the denominator. So it would look like this, 4x to the 6th over y to the 3. So only y has the negative exponent, so it is the only thing that moves. Okay, let's look at number 8. We have negative 25, x to the 13, y to the 6, over 5, x to the 5th, y squared. Does that equal negative 5, x to the 8, y to the 3rd? So looking at this, um, remember what we said before about the power being how many times something is multiplied out. So what we have for the y's, for example, is we have y to the 6th, which means that y is multiplied by itself 6 times. So I have y 6 times here, and then when I have that over y squared, that's y multiplied by itself twice, now I can cancel common factors from the top and bottom of the fraction. So 2 of the y's on the top would cancel with 2 of the y's on the bottom, and that means I have no more y's left in the denominator. So what I have left here is four y's in the numerator. So looking at this, the x's are going to cancel the same way. I have 13 x's on top, I have five x's on the bottom. Five of the x's on the top are going to cancel with the x's on the bottom, and that's going to leave me with x to the eighth. The numbers here, negative 25 over five, I'm just going to divide those out or simplify the fraction. So negative 25 over 5, that does equal negative 5. So we have negative 5. For the x's, we have x to the 8. And for the y's, we have y to the 4. And so as you can see here, that's almost what we have on the right side. The only difference is, is that we have one less y. And so a common thing here that you'll, um, a mistake that you might make is that you might divide, see 6 and 2, and divide it and get 3 because you see the fraction bar. Um, but we have to remember that we are canceling the number of factors of that, and so um, what we are essentially doing with the powers is subtracting them because all of, however many we have on the bottom are canceled with that many on the top. So this is false. Number 7 here was also false. I didn't write that, but I can write that in. Um, so this is false. So we subtract 6 and 2 instead of divide them.
Okay, now we are moving into some polynomial stuff here. So this first one, we are subtracting these two polynomials. We want to know if when we subtract them, we get what is here on the right side. So I'm going to switch my marker color because we're going to a new topic. We'll do green. Um, so we have 6x to the third. We have minus 2x to the third. We're going to subtract that and get 4x to the third. That is right. Whoops. When we think about combining things that go together, that makes sense. Now, looking at the x squared term, we have minus 6x squared. We have to apply this minus to everything that's in the second set of parentheses. And that's where this is a, another common mistake um, where it's easy to lose that. So we have minus 6x squared, and then this is going to be minus negative or plus 7x squared. Minus 6 plus 7 is 1x squared, or just x squared, when we combine those. Looking at the x term, we have 9 minus negative 4, which is 9 plus 4, which is 13x's. And finally, we have a minus 5, minus 10, which is minus 15. So one thing that you can do to kind of help yourself um, keep track is if you write things so that they line up. I'm going to rewrite my first one here. And then write the second one underneath, but put those minus signs in. So minus 2x to the third, minus negative is plus 7x squared, minus negative is plus 4x, and minus 10. So writing it out can be helpful. It's tempting to always try to do everything without writing it out, but that can lead to mistakes. So this is what we get, uh, which is not what we have here. They are not equal. Okay, now we have a multiplication problem here where we are multiplying um, two uh, binomials, these are called, because they have two terms. Do we get x squared minus 33? So there's a couple of ways that you can think about multiplying this out. One that people might have learned and remember is by using the term FOIL to help you keep track of making sure that you're multiplying everything in the first set of parentheses by everything in the second set of parentheses. Um, I could also just kind of do that and keep track. I don't have to go in the order of FOIL, but if I multiply that out, I get x squared. For the first terms, for my outside terms, I have x times 3 plus 3x. For my inside terms, I have minus 11x. And for my last term, I have minus 11 times positive 3, which is minus 33. Now, I can combine these like terms here, plus 3x minus 11x. That is a total of minus 8x's. Remember, when you're combining like terms, you can only combine things if they have the same variable with the same exponent on it. So I can combine these x's because they're the same variable can't combine that with the x squared because that has a different power on it. So this is what I get. Um, I have the x squared, I have the minus 33, but my answer up here is missing the minus 8x. And so one thing that can happen um, when people kind of, you know, forget about some of these things or get in a hurry is that you just multiply 
x times x and get x squared, negative 11 times 3 and get minus 33, but you forget about these other two parts. If we don't do those other two parts, we aren't going to get the right answer here. So false, because minus 8x is missing. Finally, for my last one here, we're doing x plus 7 times um, itself, x plus 7 squared. Does that equal x squared plus 49? This is another one where it's very tempting to just say that that's true, but we have to remember that when we multiply that out, we are doing x plus 7 times x plus 7. We cannot just distribute the squared the same way that we can distribute a number in front. Exponents don't distribute the way that a number in front or um, a coefficient would. So when we have this, now we're going to multiply it out. I'm going to do this in a slightly different way here just to show it, um, which is called a box method. You might have seen this before. Um, and this can also help you keep track of making sure that everything is multiplied. Just a little bit of a different visual here. I put the um, two sets of parentheses, one along the top, one along the side. Then I multiply the two sides of each square and write what that equals inside the square. So x times x is x squared. x times positive 7 is positive 7x. x times positive 7 is positive 7x. And positive 7 times positive 7 is positive 49. Then I add all of the things in the box. I get x squared. These two are going to add together to give me 14x's and then I have plus 49. So again, this is false here because I am missing the 14x. So I cannot just distribute that squared and square both things in the parentheses and get the right answer. If I try to do that, I will be missing part of what I need in my expression.